Amen. Amen. First, giving honor to God, who is truly the head of my life. I bring you greetings from the Cedar Street Baptist Church of God, where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Michael Anthony Chandler Sr. And I ask that you continue to pray for us as we go through this season of transition. Amen. Amen. And can we give this champion of a preacher, your pastor, A. Lincoln James, a hand clap. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. 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 Pastor James came to Cedar Street last week and tore it up. And we thank God for him. I am strengthened by the presence. I have a lot of family here. Uh, my uncle Don Jose Horton and my aunt Shirley here. I got Uncle Charles and Aunt Deborah here. I got my godmother, Miss Zenobia Dabney here. I got a best friend, Mr. T.J. Walker here. And then I come in and find out that Deacon Thomas Harvey is my cousin. <laughs> which is a blessing, so I feel like I'm at home, amen? Amen. So I want to get to the word. Does anybody need a word from the Lord this morning? Amen, amen, amen. And my coworker, Miss Tammy, wow, so I feel real good, amen, amen. Um, but there is a word from the Lord in the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 25 through 26, and it says, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Just for a few moments, I would like to come from the subject, I still have hope. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day and this time, God. God, I thank you for the opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk, God. God, I pray that you hide me behind the shadows of your cross, Lord God, that your people will not see or hear me, but they will see and hear Jesus. Anoint me afresh. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And thank you, Miss Winnie, for reaching out to me. Amen. I still have hope. Growing up, I can remember hearing my grandmother say, it's always something. Or she would say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Amen. Now that I'm a little bit older, I've been through some things, and I'm beginning to understand what she meant, especially with everything that's happening in the world today. See, it doesn't matter if what news station you watch, if it's ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, or Fox, there's always something going on. And if it's not the increased numbers of people getting COVID-19, it's monkeypox. And if it's not that, it's mass shootings or police brutality, or it's black on black crime, or it's the stipulations that the governments are putting on our black communities concerning voting rights, or it's now the country telling women what they can and cannot do concerning their body, or it's global warming, or it is the concern of weapons of mass destruction and nuclear bombs. It's always something going on. But regardless of his always being something going on, I still have hope that better days are coming. My hope, my hope is not predicated on what's happening in the world, but my hope is based on what I know for myself, that God will make a way and that God is still able 
to provide. See, I tried him for myself, and I found out that he never sleeps nor slumbers. He walks with me, and he talks with me, and he loves on me, and he keeps me. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. That is what my hope is built on. Paul and Silas knew something about having hope. Prior to our text, Paul and Silas were headed to pray, and they were interrupted by a slave girl who was a fortune teller. She had a good way of telling fortunes, and she was so good at it that she was able to bring money back to her masters. This slave girl began to harass Paul and Silas, and she would shout out, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim the way of salvation salvation. She did this for many days. Then one day she had gotten on Paul's nerves so bad he had enough. Has anybody ever gotten on your last nerves? If you're sitting beside someone who does, just keep looking at me. Amen. You're trying to do what you have to do, but people begin to get on your last nerves, always doing the most, interrupting your day, being, uh, being nosy, asking one and a thousand questions, coming into your space, being disrespectful. That has the tendency to get on your nerves. Paul and Silas were on an assignment and they were praying and this slave girl was doing nothing but stirring up trouble. Paul gets agitated and rebukes the spirit that is in the girl and he commands the spirit to come out of her in the name of Jesus and she was instantly delivered. Now, the problem here is because the slave girl can no longer make money because she's been delivered and she can no longer tell people their fortunes. So the masters take Paul and Silas to authorities and explain to them that Paul and Silas are affecting their business. Paul and Silas is the reason that their cash flow has stopped. So a riot starts and the authorities tore up Paul and Silas's clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods and thrown in prison. I said in the beginning, isn't it always something? Isn't it something how life can interrupt and switch on you? Isn't it something how you're doing something one day and before the day is over, there's been a change of plans. You are in a situation that is outside of your control. You're doing the best that you can in this life, but when you make two steps forward, you get pushed back five. You can't win for losing. You find yourself between a rock and a hard place. If it's not problems on the job, it's problems in your household. If it's not financial issues, it's health issues. Life can put you in three places. Either you're in in a storm or you're coming out of a storm or you're on your way in to a storm but I come to encourage you this morning Trinity to be not dismayed whatever be tied because God will take care of you he will not leave you he will not forsake you even though we walk through valleys of the shadow of death we don't have to fear no evil because God is with us he promised to be with us until the end of the earth he is a present help in the time of trouble Life will have its ups and downs, but Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world, we're going to have tribulations. In this world, your heart going to get broken sometimes. In this world, you're going to get frustrated sometimes, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. You have to know that the Lord is your light and your salvation. You have to know 
that the, pres the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in Christ Jesus. No matter what you're going through, just hold on because help is on the way. Keep looking up to the hills where your help comes from. David said, lift up your head, all ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting doors so the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. In our text this morning, it says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns, and the prisoners were listening, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loose. What do you do when you're about to lose hope? The Lord told me to give you these three points just like this. Number one, you need to pray with anticipation. Praise with determination and wait with expectation. What do you do when you're losing sight of hope? You have to pray with anticipation. Verse 25 says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. Paul and Silas were locked up in prison. They were not asking for their one phone call. They were not asking to speak to their lawyer, but they were praying to the almighty God. In the time of trouble, you have to know who to run to. It's good to talk to your mama. It's good to talk to your daddy. It's good to confide in friends. It's even good to go to therapy. It's good to ask the preacher to pray for you. It's good to ask the deacon to pray for you. But every now and then, you have to learn how to pray for yourself. Every now and then, you got to go in your secret closet and get down on your knees and pray to God because just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right does anybody know that prayer changes things prayer will even change you when you pray you should pray with anticipation pray like you know God hears you and that he's working that thing out for your good the Bible says that the prayers of the righteous avail of much David said I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears Paul and Silas were praying with anticipation knowing that soon Sooner or later, the Lord was going to work it out for their good. They were praying with anticipation because they understood that God had a plan for their life. They were praying with anticipation because they understood that if he did it before, that God is able to do it again. Paul and Silas were praying with anticipation because they knew that there would be glory after this. They were praying with anticipation because they had their hope in the Lord Jesus because they understood that he has never turned his back on them. He's understood that there was no failure in God. Paul and Silas were praying with anticipation knowing that if God be for them, they are more than a world against them. We have to learn how to pray with anticipation knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. Pray with anticipation knowing that God has given us the power to speak to our mountains, and our mountains have to move. We have to pray with anticipation. Pray like you're ready to start a fight with the devil, knowing that you will win. You have to pray with anticipation. But what do you do when you're losing sight of hope? Pray with anticipation but praise with determination. Praise with determination. Verse 25 reminds us that Paul and Silas uh, were praying and singing hymns to God. Isn't it amazing, even in the time of trouble, they never lost their praise. 
you know, they were singing their song that was on their heart. Heart. Paul and Silas were still able to give God glory in a dark place. If you need the Lord to come see about you, you have to open up your mouth and give him a praise of determination. I don't mind praising my God. I don't mind sending up a praise to set off an alarm in heaven. I don't mind giving God the glory because he's worthy to be praised. I stopped by this morning to encourage you. Don't lose your praise. Don't give up on God. Don't let the devil shut you up. Don't let your problems put a pause on your praise. Every now and then, you got to break out with a I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. Every now and then, you got to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Every now and then, you got to give God glory. Every now and then, you got to say, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. In the time of trouble, you got to give God praise of determination. Because you see, your praise will confuse the enemy. Because he's trying to figure out how can you still give God praise and you are going through what you're going through. But what the enemy fails to realize is that praise is what we were created to do. The enemy failed to realize that for God I live and for God I'll die. Our praise is not predicated on whether we're going to have a good day. But our praise is because God is God. God is good. And God God is worthy to be praised. The Bible says they were singing hymns to God. I don't know what they were singing, but if I could think about it, maybe they were singing hymn number 248. Time is filled with swift transitions. Not on earth unmoved can stand, but build your hopes on things eternal and hold on to God's unchanging hand. They could have turned the page to hymn number 249. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. But I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel him deep within. Yes, God is real. Or they could have sung hymn number 189. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot has taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Or they could have sung hymn number 325. We are often tossed and driven by the restless sea of times. Some bright skies are howling tempests, often succeed the sunshine. But in that land, a perfect day when the mist have rolled away, we'll understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered and thrown, we will tell the story how we've overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Or he could have sung him number 411. How to reach the masses, men of every birth, for an answer, Jesus gave the key. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up, lift him up. Still he speaks from eternity. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. 
Whatever song they were singing, it got God's attention. This is why we have to praise with determination. Whatever your song is, sing it to the glory of God. I just wish somebody would help me give God praise right now. I wish somebody would just help me lift up Jesus right now. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men men unto me. When, what do you do when you're losing sight of hope? One, you have to pray with anticipation. Praise with determination. But lastly, wait with expectation. Wait with expectation. Verse 26 says, suddenly there was a great earthquake so the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loose. After this prayer and praise and worship experience, they were having down in the jail. Something happened. Isn't it amazing how our prayer and praise grabs God's attention? It grabs his attention. The Bible says, uh, suddenly there was an earthquake. Uh, for a quick science lesson, during an earthquake, tectonic plates meet and glide against each other. The quake occurs when frictional stress and movement exceeds the strength of rocks, causing failure at the fault line. Well, I don't know what that means, but what I do know that this earthquake was a divine interruption by God. There it was a shifting in the atmosphere that provoked heaven to suddenly answer their call. The jail doors were open and everybody's chains were loose. That is the answer for your problem. That is the antidote for the situation that you're going through right now. If we learn to pray with anticipation, learn to praise with determination, and if we sit down and wait with expectation, God will show up. God will show out. Won't he do it? We just have to wait and expect God to perform a miracle for our lives today. Wait on him, expecting that he will see us through. Wait on him, expecting that the victory shall be won. David said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. The Bible says, be still the Lord and wait patiently for him. The Bible says, I will wait for the Lord. My soul waits in his word. I have hope. The Bible says, lead me in the truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. I will wait for you all the day long. While we're waiting, we have to wait with expectation. Sarah and Abraham had to wait with expectation all the way until they turned about a hundred or something. Before they had their baby, Isaac was born. Job was faithful to God and lost everything that he had, but he waited with expectation, knowing that God gave him double for his trouble. Daniel was in the lion's den all night, but he waited with expectation, knowing that God was going to bring him out. The woman with the issue of blood had to wait with expectation for 12 long years, but she figured if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. The blind man heard that Jesus was passing by, and he said, Jesus, put your hands on my eyes so I can see. Jesus, put your hand on my body so I can be healed. Paul and Silas had to wait all night, praying and praising and waiting with expectation for God to come and see about them. And suddenly, God showed up with a supernatural way that the earth had to move. Even Jesus had to wait 
wait with expectation in the garden of Gethsemane, knowing what was about to happen. They, he said, destroy this temple, but within three days, uh, I will raise it up. Uh, they marched my Jesus uh, to Calvary's hill. He was beaten, uh, mocked, and scorned all night long. Uh, they pierced him in his hands and in his feet and his side. Somebody said, surely he died for you and for me. He waited in the grave uh, all night Friday. He waited in the grave uh, all day. Saturday, but early Sunday morning, God showed up uh, and he showed out. Uh, early Sunday morning, he got up with power over death, uh, hell, and the grave. This is why I still uh, have hope. Uh, hope for tomorrow. Hope in the time of sorrow. Hope in the time of trouble. I still have hope. So with the licking, I'm going to keep on ticking. Hope that he will fight my battles. Hope that the victory shall be won. After all uh, I've been through, I have not uh, lost my praise. After all uh, I've been through, I still have hope. I still have hope. I still have hope. Come on and give God some glory. Come on and praise him. The gospel has been preached. Am I right about that? I said the gospel has been preached. Preached with power. Preached with textual insight. Preached with celebration. And that's what black preaching is. Come on and give God some glory in here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Thank you, young preacher. I say that with all of the uh, praise that you would give a young man who is functionally entering into the gospel ministry. It tells us that God has another generation. Come on, come on, come on. I have been doing what I have been doing as a pastor for 54 years, as a preacher, 55. My daddy was a preacher. My granddaddy was a preacher. My great-great-granddaddy was a preacher. I think I might know a little something just a little about preaching. This young man preached today. Yes, he did. And there's absolutely no telling what God's going to do with him and what God is going to do through him. And so I just want to encourage him, keep doing what you're doing. Pray preach, and study. I said study. The Holy Ghost can't get something to come out of your mouth unless it's in your brain and in your heart. Uh, praise God. Doors of the church are open. The doors are open. And they well may be in this house at this hour. Somebody who's losing hope. I know what that is. But God, and whoever that person may be, whether they're in the balcony or on the main floor, hear the preacher. For it was the word, it is the word of God. God will bring you through. I heard him, I heard him when he said, don't give up on God. 
Learn how to pray. And God will make the way. These doors are open. If you are here today, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. It is the best decision you will ever make in this life. And we have some critical decisions to make. Critical decisions personally that will direct the destiny of every soul. But this decision is the most important to come to Jesus Christ. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, send who you will, bring who you want, and touch in your hallowed name. We say thank you. We shout together hallelujah. Amen. God bless you as we take our seats just for a moment to the glory of God. Every Sunday, all the way through and to December, perhaps beyond, we end our service with an affirmation. We affirm the reality of the sermon. To affirm means to say yes. To affirm means I agree. Did anybody here agree with what the preacher said? So we make an affirmation that we, in our agreement, are not just going to walk out of here and by Tuesday forget what the preacher has said. Because something that he said will help you on Thursday. And so this affirmation is simply our way of saying, Lord, we're going to live the life. We're going to walk the walk. And quit just talking the talk. Does everybody here want to walk the walk? Then let's say into our feet with our affirmation and benediction. You are repeating after me. My soul will prosper. My work will prosper. Everything I touch this week will be a success. Everything I do will glorify my God. I am somebody. I am a child of God. I'm going to walk it. I'm going to talk it. I'm going to live it in Jesus' name. Give God some praise right now. Come on and praise him. Came here to praise him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Might every head be bowed. Oh, Lord, our God, bless. Keep your children. Every last one of us, from the pulpit to the door, hold us in your arms. Share your loving kindness and favor us with your power. In the name of Jesus, it is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, God. Keep you. Thank you for sharing today. Please meet us on Wednesday at 12 noon. If not, then it's posted. You can get to it anytime you want to.